It's great to be able to be here today, and um, I got a, a message today from my wife this week, given by Jasmine to her, and she said, is dad preaching? She goes, yeah. She said, well, we got a lot of visitors, a lot of people, so ask him to be, to be short and to the point. I said, uh, I figured, I said, you know, I don't, as parents, we don't get that many moments to be disobedient to our children. <laughs> and this is my opportunity <laughs> to be very disobedient to our children. But it's good to be able to be here at the house of the Lord. We've been, uh, we've been talking about, we started a series uh, last week on the church. The church. And the reason why I, I um, started this, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sort of uh, uh, challenging our, our system of what we call church uh, in our times. And I'm comparing it to what the Bible says about church. And the thing is, a lot of times something gets written and 2,000 years later, you know, people begin to, uh, you know, just do different things and do things in different ways. And, and sometimes, and, 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 and what happens is that a lot of people just really don't want to read on their own or don't want to study on their own. And, and, and what they do is they become very uh, uh, just dependent upon people and upon people telling them what you know, what things are, and then if you go to church and the pastor says that it must be true, you know, and, and people follow this, and sometimes it becomes into traditions, and there are times where I think you need to, like, go back and say, you know, what does the Bible really say? What does the Bible really say about this? And this is what I'm doing uh, with the topic of the church. Last week, we... Um, we learned something. We, uh, the title last week was His, His Church. And we learned a couple of things just to bring you up to date. Is that church is not something that you go to, you know. And, and the first mistake that we make a lot of times, people say, I'm going to church. That is completely unbiblical because uh, church is not something you go to. Church, the word ekklesia in the Greek that, you know, the New Testament was written in Greek. The word ekklesia, really what it, what it means is those that are called out. Those that are called out. So the word church, it refers to people, refers to those that are called out. It doesn't, re is, it is not talking about a place. It's not talking about a place that you go to, or some people say, we'll do church. That is, is it isn't biblical either, okay? The church are you and I. We are the ones that are called out by God. And so when the Bible talks about church, it is talking about a living organism. It is talking about people. We are the church. So this place is actually... Uh, a temple, this is why in the, in, the, in the scriptures, you call, says they went to the temple. It didn't say they went to church. You go to a temple where the church gathers. You don't go to church. You go to a building. You go to a temple where, where the church gathers. We also learned that we are his church. If you accept him as your savior, it's because he has called you. If you accept him as your Lord and Savior, it's because he has called you. And if he calls you out, he had, now you are his church and you belong to him. We also learned that when Jesus referred to the church, he referred to as my church. In other, in other words, the church belongs to him. It doesn't belong to any human entity. It doesn't belong to any human organization. The church belongs to him. And what happens is the false belief in that is, is that we, we connect to denominations. We connect to pastors. We connect to human entities instead of connecting to God. And therefore, uh, uh, people do these connections instead of connecting directly to God. 
that we have been called to be and we have been called out. If God has called you, he has called you to be part of his kingdom. And there are two kingdoms in this world. One is Satan's kingdom and one is God's kingdom. And God has called you and I to be part of his kingdom. Now today, I want to, uh, the title of today's is His Body. It was His Church. Now this title is His Body. Uh, the, Bible uses the, this, uh, uh, the Bible uses a term, right, to describe our relationship with Jesus. And when we hear the word body, that the church is the body of Christ, what it's trying to, to tell us is what kind of relationship we have to Jesus. The Bible uses the term to describe our relationship to Jesus and our function. And, and, and this is what, what we'll discuss today. What is, what is our, our relationship to Christ and what is this function? Because the Bible says in many verses, it says that we are the body of Christ. I'm going to just go over some verses together with you. Romans uh, 12, 5. Romans 12, 5 says, for so we uh, being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So we being are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So we are one body, okay? Christ does not have a bunch of different bodies. And that is crucial and important for us to understand. Christ has one body because that one body is connected to him. If you're not connected to him, you're not part of his body. Okay, so Christ has one body. Ephesians 3, 6 also tells us that the Gentiles should follow errors of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ. So in Christ, in relationship to Christ, we are part of his body. Ephesians 4, also 15 to 16 says, but speaking the truth and love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ. Christ sees himself in the Bible. Christ is, seems as the head. And his church, who are his church? People that have been called out from the world to become part of his kingdom. And that, those that have been called and accepted the calling to be part of his kingdom are now also called his body. So the Bible claims Jesus being the head and the church, those who have listened to his calling to be the, his body. Verse 16 says, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective, according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Because growth causes growth of the body. So what happens is when we are part of the body of Christ, okay, in us, there's, there's nothing in us that doesn't have a purpose, the body. So he talk, says that we're the body. In other words, our, you know, our nails have a purpose. You know, our fingers have a purpose. Everything has a purpose. When, when, when any of these things, and he says that he is the head. So Anything that is, that is not connected to, uh, as I study this, I said, you know, the, the, the way we can understand this better is, a, is that Jesus is the brain and we are the body. That's what it's really saying. Anything in the body that is disconnected from the brain doesn't function. Because the brain is what connects everything. So, so if there's, if there's a, a, an, an arm, if there's a nerve problem, the nerve that goes to the arm, and if there's a problem there in this arm, then th there's a disconnection. This arm stops carrying out its function. This arm can't, can't work. And what happens is that we, sometimes when we disconnect ourselves from God, then we, we don't carry out our function anymore. And for the body to function right, everybody has a function. Now, the way we've we we've, we've have church today. We have these, you know, big, humongous churches, whatever. You know, the people walk in, you know, Saturday morning with their Starbucks, you know. And, uh, you know, they sit in the back and they're entertained with great music. They're entertained with, with stuff and they go home and they say, we went to church. 
the phrase we went to church, that phrase right there, they think it automatically makes them a Christian. And that somehow people must trust them more. Like if they're doing a business deal, people like to say, I go to church. Because that's going to get like people to trust them more. And it's a phrase that is thrown around. Just because you go to church, it doesn't mean anything. You know, you guys have heard me say the phrase, going to church is overrated. And it's not because I don't want you to go to church. It's the idea that, 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 that in, in the scriptures, belonging to the body of Christ has a connection with Christ, not with some pastor or with some church, is a connection with Christ itself. If you're not connected to the brain, if you're not connected to the body, I mean, if you're not connected to the head, if you're not connected to the brain, you're not the church. And church is not something you go to. And sometimes we think, that, you know, because, because we, we go there and this whole concept, when, when the concept is not understood properly, it creates, a, 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 it's a chain of, uh, a chain reactions of things that go wrong. Ephesians, you know, if, if we go to a church, if you, if you are part of the church of Christ, you must have a function. You must have that function. God has to be using you in some sort of way. In some sort of way. Because now you're a part of his kingdom. And there is a function that you do. And, and we all have gifts. And we all, all have abilities. And whatever it is. And that it must be used to, to serve in the kingdom of God. The, the idea of, of, of going to church and being spectators weekend after weekend, weekend after weekend, and just going as an spectator is not, is not when you go to the biblical way of where church is, that's not the way it is. We all have a function, and God calls us with a responsibility. Colossians, if we go also, Ephesians 5.23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is savior of the body. Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body. Okay, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. And, and you know, it, these verses are all, we can take each verse and preach on them, but I just want you to understand here that, that, that the church are you and I, and what makes us his body is because we are connected to Christ. We are, we are, we are connected to Christ, and in, in our connection with him, he, he is the one who leads us in what we do and how we do it, and that's what makes us his church. I'm going to skip uh, uh, one of the verses and just go into this. Um, the term... Uh, body of Christ is, is the function, tells us the function we carry out. Now, this is, this is so serious, people. I mean, the more I got into it this week, the more it, it got me to, 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 to think. You know, I am, I, I, I am his body. That's, that's an, I mean, that's just a thought to sit back and think. Because if I am the body of Christ and Christ is my head, what is, what is my body doing? Is this body representing the brain, Jesus? You see, one of the things I've told people, I said, I said I've, never, I've never seen Jesus feed someone who's hungry. Never. I've never seen Jesus who couldn't pay, help somebody who couldn't pay their bill. I've never seen Jesus do anything in this world. I personally have never seen him do anything in this world. Why? Because that is the job. That is our job. We are his body. We're the ones who are supposed to carry out. The church, the, the, the thing of the church is not just for us to go to church. It's for us to carry out in the world that we live in the acts of Jesus. What would Jesus do? We are his body. 
We are his body left here. He goes to heaven and, and he gives his church the Holy Spirit and we become his body. We, we, our responsibility is not just to go to church. Our responsibility is to carry out the will of God. What would Jesus do if he was here? Who would he help him? What is he going to be doing? How is he going to be treating people? How, what does Jesus do? That is the job of the church. We are his body. We carry that out. It's not the idea of come to church, uh, come to church, everybody come together, give your money, bye, see you later till next week. It's, there's more to it than that. There's more to it than that. We have decided, when you decide to become a Christian, you decide to be part of his kingdom. And, and it's not... The idea of just attending churches is how we live every day. We are representing Jesus and how we live every day. If you are part of the body, when you have a function, you, you have a function and you have a purpose. Right? The, 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 the phrase used, the body, you know, the arm has a purpose. The arm, and, and if you go to, you know, where actually, you know, we get into that next week where he goes, you know, every, every part of the body, and Paul uses that uh, illustration of, of our body. Everybody is, everything is important, no matter how small an organ is, it, it, it becomes important. When that organ is disconnected, for some reason, the brain and that organ are not connected anymore. It, it, it's, it's no good anymore. You know, it gets cut off. This idea that I go to church said that the church is, it says the church is a building, a thing. But the biblical idea that the church is the body of Christ turns the church into a living organism of believers that are led to the, to the that, that are tied to the brain Jesus. That means, what does this mean? That church is in your home. If you're in your home and you're a believer, church is there. That means that church is when you're eating out in a restaurant. Church is at your job. Church everywhere. and never stops going to church. People dress up. You know, we, we do that, right? We dress up to go to church. You know, we dress up to go there because it, we think it's a special place. No, you are a special being called by God every day, everywhere you're at. Everywhere you're at. See, when that changed, when we're able to change that mindset, you know, that it's not a place you go to and then you dress differently than for when. No, no, no. I, people, let me, let me tell you something. When you come to church, I want you to come dressed like you, you dress every day. God knows the reality. See, we have this thing about if the pastor sees me, if the church sees me, that's, that, 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 that's what's messed up. You don't live for a church. You don't live for a pastor. You live for God. And God knows who you are and what you're going through and how you dress. God knows everything about you. And the thing is, we've, 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 learned, to, to, we've learned to satisfy people instead of satisfying God. We're more worried about what people think of us than what God thinks of us. But, but this whole thing changes when we, when we have this concept uh, of church being a place or, or someone. Have you ever heard the phrase, uh, uh, he lost his head? You know? He lost his head. Have you ever heard that phrase? It has to do with irrational thinking. It has to do with a person who's controlled, you know, by their emotions, uh, by their ego. And, 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 and when that happens, they tend to hurt themselves and hurt others because they, you know, they lost their, their, their head. In the context of Christianity, when a person loses their head is when they disconnect themselves from Christ, which means you stop being the church. But here's the problem, that even though they're not connected to Christ, they still keep saying, I go to church. And that's where the world gets confused. See, people don't have a problem with God. They have a problem with the church. 
Because sometimes we, the way we behave, the way we are, we call ourselves the church. Even though we're disconnected from the head, even though we lost our head. What makes part of the body, what makes us part of the body is that we are connected to Jesus. I can't do church for you. So I, I, I explained that last Sabbath. And sometimes pastors and church leaders, we not knock ourselves out trying to create a service that you people, that people like to create church for you. That's impossible. We can't create church for you. If you're not connected to God, if you don't have a personal relationship with God, there's nothing that anybody else can do for you. You can be entertained. You can say, ah, it's a good song, man. But did it take you to the presence of God? Did it take you to repentance? Because you see what's popular out there is making people feel good. You see these places that got 40,000 people going and got whatever. And it's because that preacher will never say, listen, you might be doing something wrong in your life. No, they're, hey, man, life is good. Don't worry about it. You know, and it's, and it's this, it's, it's this uh, motivational speech thing going and they, and they make people feel good. And people love the idea because they get to go to church and they get to feel, the, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm wonderful. But you see, when the spirit of God the word of the Lord in, in Timothy t- tells us that the inspired word of God corrects us. The, inspir- the, 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 the word of God helps us to see where we're at, brings us to repentance, brings us to change, brings us to transformation. God accepts us as we are to make us what he wants us to be. So, so being part of his body has nothing to do with being connected to a specific denomination. It has to do with being connected to Christ, the brain. Has to do with being connected with him. Now, being part of the body of Christ would not bring you into agreement with the world. Uh, one of the things that now the church is trying to do is trying to be relevant to the world. And sometimes we can become so relevant to the world that we we become completely unrelevant to the gospel. Now, being part of the body of Christ will not bring you into agreement with the world. Remember, the church is called out from the world into a new kingdom based on godly principles. When you come to Christ, that's going to, if, if you expect that when you come to Christ and you accept the laws and principles of God, that that's going to bring you an agreement with the world, no. It's not going to bring you an agreement with the world. It's, 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 you know, it's like the saying I've said before, if in your walk in life you haven't encountered the devil, it's maybe because you're walking alongside of him. So, Living a Christian life is not going to mean that everybody's going to agree with you. I mean, people are going to look at you and say, oh, oh my, that's mean. See, see, you're doing something mean. And, and, and we're going to be looked at completely from the world because the world has his way of life. And the kingdom of God has his way of, 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 of life. And when you decide to walk into God's kingdom, that's going to be completely contrary to what the world has. And that's where this verse comes in place, Matthew 10, 34 to 38. It says, do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. This is Jesus. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the man's enemies will be those in his own household. He who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He who does not love, who who does not take his cross and follow me and follow after me is not worthy of me. This is a tough verse. 
And, and, and we did that this week, uh, uh, Monday night. You can only, this is what this verse says. You can only love your husband properly when you love God first. Amen. You can only love your kids properly when you love God first. The problem is that when we love our kids more than we love God, then parents also, well, I want to be their friend. I want to be, you know, I, I want to make sure whatever. No, you, you, you have to love God more. And you have to hold up your principles whether hell breaks loose. Whether hell breaks loose, God's principles are first. And you uphold them. And this is where, where, this, where, where this comes in. When you decide, if you think that you're going to follow God and that everybody is going to be okay with you and that everybody is going to be, it, it, it isn't because you automatically declare war on the ways of this world. You automatically declare, declare war. You automatically declare war to everything that this world says is okay and Jesus says it's not okay. Oh, believe me, people, we, we, we love being okay with everybody. We would love to. But people that are in God's kingdom cannot. We belong to a different kingdom. We belong to a kingdom who follows different, different rules. Different, we go by different principles that God teaches. Church and being part of his body has nothing to do with you attending here or attending another place has to be with your connection to Christ. If you're the body and he is the brain, then you are connected to him and your connection with him is essential. That means that you have to know him. That means you have to study his word. That means that you have to have a life of prayer. The word of God in prayer is what God gave us to be connected to him. For you to be able to have that life type of connection with God, that has to be because you have to be church with God. Not just when you come here or when you go to church on a weekend. You have to be church to God. And you are connected. He is your brain. Can you, I mean, see, that concept, people, is so powerful. He is your brain. You are the body. The body reacts to the brain. If the brain says one thing and the body does another, then you're sick. You have a problem. And that's why this concept of head, brain, body is so essential in the Bible because it really brings into anything, everything reality. And the reason why we are sick sometimes and the reason why is because our body, we being the body, do something completely different than what the brain is saying. And when that happens, there's a problem. It is such a, a, a powerful concept of this. And we have to understand the word of God. People, if, if you're not into the word of God, I ask you to be, go into the word of God. And understand what God is trying to teach us in his principles. Because if not, you're trying to live Christianity but by what you think is right. Well, I think this is right. Well, that's no. As Christians, we live by what God says is right. It's not what I think is right. Remember, remember one time somebody was talking to me and said, well, I don't think this is right. I don't think that's right. You know, and, and trying to, you know, uh, argue, you know, uh, biblical principles with me. And I had a Bible and I said, I said, OK, you know, let's. Let's study the Bible here. Here's your Bible. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. They said, uh, where's the book of Jeremiah? 
I said, my point, shut up and listen. <laughs> Just listen. Because what you're trying to do, you're trying to explain God based on your own way of thinking. You have created your own God. You have created this God in your head. And you have invented an idol. You've invented this God. When we belong, we belong to the body of Christ. Christ becomes our brain. Christ becomes our head. And this is what his body goes for. When it says that we are the body, it has to do with our relationship with the head, with our relationship with Christ. This concept to me is so deep. It is something that we have uh, forgotten. We've humanized church. We've humanized religion. Uh, we've done all these things. And we have forgotten that we are responsible to our God, not to no human being, not to any pastor, but to God himself. And the thing is that when we become responsible to God ourselves and we allow Jesus' brain to lead us, we will live as Christians, not just when we come to church, but we will live as Christians every single moment of our lives, no matter where we go. You know why? Because you are his body. He is your brain. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your blessings, and we thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to be here today. We thank you for the opportunity to, to just come as a church and worship you corporately. We ask, Lord, that you may help us every day to really be connected to Jesus Christ, to be connected to the brain of Jesus, that he may teach us, that we may have the strength, Lord, to, to stay connected and to carry out his will because we as human beings, we, we know what we want, we know what we like, and for us to give up the things that we want for your desire and your wants is difficult. But we ask for your help. We ask for your help so that you can make us and help us to become everything you want us to be. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for bringing us here together. Thank you for Alea. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have something special for her. Bless us this day in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We'd like to uh, invite, invite all of you. We have lunch here prepared for you. Uh, so please... Um, you know, and if you come to this church regularly, like I said, uh, in this church, we don't have members. And it's part of everything that I teach. I don't believe in membership. I believe that we all belong to the kingdom of God. I don't need to own anybody. And, uh, but if you come to this church regularly and you see people that are new in our church or come for the first time, let them go through lunch first, okay? And, uh, and uh, so they can be able to get a seat out there. We got some tables set out there. So um, uh, let, you know, let us uh, partake of the lunch that we, we have. If you notice in our church, we don't pass an offering plate. Uh, we have, if you want to give online, you can go to originchurch.com or you can text uh, 561-462-5932. Or we have two boxes out there that you can give out there if you want. Uh, in our church, money is not, is not the emphasis. Uh, and if you believe in this this ministry and you want to help it to continue uh we'd appreciate it if not it's okay we love you the same uh but we've been doing this now for 10 years in this way and we've always had plenty so uh if god moves you to help this ministry thank you very much if not that's okay we we love you and we thank you for coming and come on back um we also have discipleship on webex uh discipleship 101 we have that on mondays at 8 a.m. If you download the app WebEx, you can have it in your computer or whatever your device. And then you can go to originchurch.com and go to meetings and meeting room A. Monday night, we're there for discipleship. And Wednesday night, we're there for our prayer meeting. So you can, uh, you can join us.
December 17, we have an amazing Christmas program. Don't miss it. Hear it at the same time. Forgiven, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. That'll be on the 17th at 11 a.m. It's going to be a great Christmas program. If you, uh, if you, if you have a lot of important things to do this day, come anyway. This, this is more important. Okay, so we hopefully we expect you here on that day on the 17th and invite friends, invite family members and, uh, and come join us to celebrate our Christmas program on December 17th. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Thank you for joining us today and stay by for lunch, please. Llévate esto, llévate esto, please.